So I've been wanting to film today's video for a little while, but honestly, I'll tell you it's been hard for me because being a sensitive skinned person, I don't quite get excited for new skincare like I feel most people in the community do. Do you know what I mean? When your skin is as sensitive as mine and acne prone, oily, trying something out is less exciting and more nerve wracking. <laughs> and it's been really exciting being a skincare content creator on YouTube and on TikTok and also on Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, it's just at the Rudy Berry quick plug. And because of that, I have had a lot of brands offer to send me their products to try out, which like I said, is exciting in theory, but for me, also a little nerve wracking. So today I wanted to talk about some of the trendy brands and those specific trendy products from those brands that I've been seeing going viral, which that's a whole nother conversation, online. And if I recommend that product for people with sensitive acne prone skin, and if not, are there other things from that brand that you can use if you choose to support this brand? I know that it can be sometimes boring to constantly be in the CeraVe loop or the La Roche-Posay loop or the Vanna Cream loop, and sometimes you wanna just try something new. So I do have a huge smattering of things that we're gonna go through here today. I have some recommendations and some things that I would say it's better for you to skip if you are sensitive like me, and I am really excited to go through these today. If you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe. I upload twice a week and we talk about more than just skincare. We talk about makeup, blogging, mental health, TikTok, beauty. We do it all and I would love to have you join. Let's start with Hero Cosmetics. I have talked about Hero a few times, you know, around on my different channels. And a few of you have mentioned that you have seen me in a Hero ad on their page, which is absolutely true. I did make an ad for their Clear Collective line, which is something that I wanna talk about with you guys right now. So I actually have a friend who works at Hero Cosmetics and she sent me these and asked me to try them for a few weeks. And if I liked them to make ads for their page, I absolutely loved them and I wanna be able to talk about them with you now. Honestly, Hero is a brand that I can fully get behind in terms of their ethics and in terms of their products and the way that they formulate their products. So I have a favorites video talking about their lightning wand, which is basically a spot treatment with different types of acids and vitamin C to help spot treat specific areas where you have scars rather than using an all over treatment, which is what I prefer. And then you probably also know them for their mighty patches. They have a few different kinds and honestly, they're very, very good. They have the invisible, which can be worn during the day and they're so, so, so thin. They have the micro dart one, which is similar to the zit sticker with salicylic acid in it. And then they just have the original, which is the one I use the most. And I've talked also at length on my page about the CauseRx uh, pimple batches. And I would say these are very similar. You can just pick these up at the store, whereas I'm not able to buy CauseRx at the store. So I've just been using these more often. Absolutely recommend them. And same with the entire Clear Collective line. Let me give you a little bit of a, of a background on these products. So first is the cleanser. It is an exfoliating jelly cleanser and when you hear that you're probably like wait a second you use tretinoin you have sensitive skin why would you use an exfoliating cleanser I prefer to use a cleanser like this in the summer or after I work out when my skin is getting kind of oily I'm noticing more whiteheads or blackheads come up I would prefer to use a lightly exfoliating cleanser rather than a leave-on treatment and this is a foaming cleanser so it leaves my skin feeling very clean but not squeaky it's also very gentle completely fragrance free and I have had no problems with it as someone with sensitive skin. It's also really unique. It has like these little jellies in it that pop when you use it on your face. So this entire line, to be honest, I feel like is a perfect line for people with just starting out in skincare who just want a three-step system. Okay, we'll get to that. So the second part of the line is their balancing capsule toner. Again, lightly exfoliates, but it's more meant to balance the skin with like these little oil bursts in them. I have used this as well on days when I'm not using tretinoin, although I do think it's gentle enough to be used at the same time. And I think this is their most popular product in the line. I haven't used that much of it as you can see, but when I have used it on dry skin days, I've really, really enjoyed it. So if you're looking for a gentle exfoliation that you could use alongside your tretinoin to kind of help just lift off some of that dead skin without using like a full polished choice BHA, 
look into these. You can get these at Target. And then I would say the moisturizer is okay. It's just a regular moisturizer. There's no SPF. It is a clarifying prebiotic moisturizer. So if you're into pre or postbiotics in skincare, take a look at this. It's a very no nonsense, like I said, fragrance free moisturizer. So that is my thoughts on Hero. I am a huge fan. And if you're looking for something new to try, I would say definitely check them out. So this is less of a brand review on this next one and more of a viral product. I don't know if you guys have seen the Juno Skin Clean It 10 or Clean 10 Cleansing Balm, but this got very, very viral on TikTok. It matches my outfit. For being a cleansing balm with only 10 ingredients and they sent this to me to try and I actually did post a TikTok about it. I can put it in here. It is just not, not my favorite thing. For, as someone with sensitive skin, one of the 10 ingredients in here is orange peel extract or orange peel, and it's incredibly, incredibly scented. And on top of that, the actual consistency of the product is very strange. I prefer a hard balm, and this is kind of like a loose goo, if you will. And I got it as a loose goo. I've seen photos of it as a loose goo, and I've seen photos of it as a hard balm. So I'm not really sure if it's in transit that it's doing that or what. But to me, this is a pass. Even though it is a good price, I think that you can find a better cleansing balm for sensitive skin. It works, I just don't love it. So I also posted on my community tab that I got a package from Osea Malibu. First off, these the packaging on these products is so luxurious, so luxurious. So beautiful. I actually talked about this body oil in a favorites and flops because unfortunately it did not work for me. And if you have sensitive skin, I'm going to go ahead and say it's not going to work for you either because it is a very fragranced body oil. It smells so good. I absolutely love the scent, but I just can't use it on my eczema prone body. I'm thinking of giving this away to my mom who I think would like it or using it in the bath, like putting a few pumps in the bath to kind of give it a nice aromatherapy vibes. But on top of that, I just don't prefer oil. I prefer like a lotion on my skin instead. So this unfortunately did not work for me, but it could work for you if you like a luxurious experience and you don't have super sensitive body skin. And I will be honest with you, I have not tried either of these products yet because I am kind of afraid of using seaweed on my face. I've heard mixed things about using seaweed products on sensitive skin. So I just haven't taken the dive in. I haven't dove into it yet because I'm just a little bit nervous. But they sent their sea mineral mist, which is so pretty, and their hyaluronic sea serum, which I have heard amazing things about. It is a super duper thick consistency. Let me see if I can show you here. I don't know if you can see this like bubble of product, but oh yeah. It feels kind of like a gel, like a jelly glue. And um, it feels amazing. I patch tested it on my neck and my hand with no reaction, but a part of me is just, I don't really use hyaluronic acid serums to be honest with you because I find that most of my moisturizers already have hyaluronic acid in it. And so, you know me, I don't like to do like a 20 step routine. And if I can keep it, you know, under, we've got our moisturizer, our treatment step and our SPF, I feel pretty good about that. However, this feels very luxurious. It's beautiful packaging. Not that I want to be drawn into that, but Tell me what you guys think about these. Have you tried anything from Osea? Do you feel like it's worth trying? I told them to send me things that were fragrance free and good for sensitive skin. So beyond the body oil, which obviously is not for the face, these two are what they sent me. They're both fragrance free, but they do have that seaweed concept. So I'm just a little nervous. Okay, it's time to talk about the brand of the moment. Can you guys guess what I'm gonna say? It is Coco Kind. People are going nuts about Coco Kind. And I have a few, I have a few things to say and I have a few opinions about them. So in terms of the brand, I am a thousand percent on board with their ethics. I am a thousand percent on board with the way that they do business, their pricing, their availability, everything about them and the way that they do business is amazing. They are so transparent. They talk about how their products are made. They talk about the percentage of each ingredient, how they're formulated. Everything is recyclable. They do their best to continue to improve based on customer experience. I mean, incredible. The team there is incredibly nice. They listen to their customers. I couldn't say enough nice things. 
However, the products themselves are a little bit woo-woo for me. And by that I mean they're very natural based, right? So for example, they sent me a few things, a few things I will use and a few things that I won't. So for example, the matcha moisturizer. It's, you know, sort of based in green tea, matcha, which is fine. And then the watermelon hemp oil. This to me is one that I would absolutely not recommend on sensitive skin because most of the ingredients in this product are just essential oils. So we're looking at the first ingredient being watermelon seed oil, which is fine, but then we've got bergamot peel oil, rosemary flower oil, orange peel, and eucalyptus oil. So this is just an essential oil in a bottle. I would never ever put this on my face because of my sensitive skin. I know a lot of people who like this and like to gua sha with it, but I'm gonna probably use this in the bath. This, the you know, I just prefer things that are usually in a white tub and have the eczema approval of association on it. Like, we're talking CeraVe, La Roche-Posay, Vanna Cream, you know me. So the watermelon vibes, it's just, I can't use it. I just can't use it. That doesn't mean that I don't love the brand. There are three things that I wanna mention from the brand. If you still want to be able to support them, but you don't feel like you can go along with the watermelon matcha vibe hype. Okay, the first thing is their matcha, my matcha moisture stick. I have this one and the beet one, and I just use them on my lips because the base of this is coconut oil and the base of that one is olive oil. So again, I don't like to put them on my face at all, but I use it as like a giant chapstick and I put it next to my bed. And it is an amazing chapstick. It doesn't transfer. It's great if you like to drink out of a straw and you don't want transfer. And it's so cute and it is a ton of product for a pretty good price. So that's one thing. I also use the scrubbing clay, which is a really nice no fragrance added body uh, scrub. And I like to use this when I'm using, you know, a self tanner maybe the next day. And this has kind of replaced my, yeah, my lush coffee scrub because it does have that similar vibe. It's still a very nice body product. And then my favorite product in total from them is their rose water toner. And no, I don't use this on my face. Who could have guessed it? Because literally the only thing in here is rose water. That's it. But I love to use this on my scalp and I'm gonna do an entire hair care video in the next month. So wait on that one. But basically I use this at night after if I'm not showering and it helps kind of revive my hair and get some of the you know old product that's built up in my scalp. And then when I wake up the next day, my, my scalp just feels a little bit more refreshed. Really am loving this for my hair. Don't use it for my face. But those are kind of my favorites and the ones to avoid from Coco Kind. Oh, also they did send me the chlorophyll mask. And um, if you have a gluten allergy like me, definitely do not use this. All right, two more. Let's cover one that again, I've talked about in a favorites and flops. And, and the product that was a flop was their Drench and Quench Rich Water Cream. This is from Bliss. And they again sent me this along with their Blockstar sunscreen. So I will be honest with you, I have not liked either of these products. This, however, has gone viral now on TikTok. So the water cream I mentioned in my video that I didn't like it because it felt a little too silicone-y for me. It feels very, very slippery and like jelly. I don't know, it's just not, I don't know. For some reason, it's just, it's not for me. I much prefer my Hydro Boost over this, although I do think that's kind of the vibe that they were going for. I actually uh, gave away the other one to my friend. There's one that is fragrance free and one that has fragrance and I don't know. Something about it is not for me. I don't know if you guys have tried this, but again, same with the Blockstar. People are really liking this for good reason, which is that it is a tinted mineral sunscreen that is not leaving a huge white cast on darker skin, which is obviously a problem that most dark skin people have with mineral sunscreen, which stinks because obviously people with sensitive skin typically prefer mineral sunscreens. So I have seen this go viral on a few different skin tones because it is that like more of tan color, but I do think that if you have deep skin tone, it's still gonna leave a white cast, at least a little bit, because that's what mineral sunscreen does. I mean. It's just the way it is, unfortunately. I have yet to find a completely clear one, although I did see that Supergoop came out with a sheer mineral. But the reason that I don't like this is twofold. One, again, the scent is incredibly strong. I've been seeing people say that it is lightly scented like lavender. Absolutely not. It is 
very strong lavender scent. I mean, it smells like you're in a spa. It is so strong. So one, off the bat, I, I don't like having lavender oil sit on my face all day. And two, again, it has that silicone-y feeling. So some people may like that for makeup priming, but I personally prefer to leave my skincare and makeup separate, which is why I, I didn't really like the Unseen sunscreen from Supergoop either, just because it has that silicone-y feeling and when you have oily skin, that sometimes work and sometimes it ends up making everything on top of it slide around. So still more of a sheer, very lightweight type of person. And I might try this out this summer. I might give it to a friend, but the scent and the feel of the silicone is just a little bit too, too much for me personally. And the very last brand that I wanted to talk about that I feel deserves hype is Beekman 1802. They sent me a little mini set. So they sent me their milk drops, which is, you know, the thing I really want to talk about. And then the bloom cream and their exfoliating jelly cleanser, which is, sounds similar to the Hero Cosmetics one. And also they did send an eye serum. So I have yet to try the cleanser or the moisturizer, but I do want to talk about the probiotic serum. So this is uh, their milk drops probiotics serum. This is made with ceramides and that is like the main draw here. But the main, main draw of Beekman is goat milk. And when I first heard that, I was like a little bit worried. I don't know why. I thought like goat milk, I don't know if my skin is going to like that. It's It's got a little bit of a goaty milk <laughs> scent to it. I don't know how to describe it. But these were formulated for people with sensitive skin, so I was pretty much their target audience right away. And I have been using these ceramide drops, the milk drops, on my nights with tretinoin, and I think that they work very, very well. I will say I know two people personally who had a reaction to the milk drops specifically, and I was kind of surprised because it's a super short ingredient list and it's mostly goat milk and ceramides. So I was a little bit hesitant to try it, but so far so good, I haven't had any problems with with it and this is also coming up in the Ulta 21 days of beauty sale so if you're looking to get a deal on it because they are a little bit expensive I would say pick it up then but people are going nuts for the probiotic moisturizer in uh, the big tube which is their bloom cream because when you push down on it I'll, I'll put a video in it creates a flower and they have been creating boosters that can go along with the moisturizer to help buffer any irritation that you might have so they have a vitamin C and they also have a bakuchiol which is a retinol alternative that you can mix in with a moisturizer to help buffer so if you're looking for a sensitive skin friendly routine that's easy and already set out for you and you want to experiment with vitamin C or a retinol alternative totally look into Beekman. Honestly, I'm super impressed. So far, so good. And I'm really excited to try more of their line. Okay, I know that was a lot of product that we just talked about, but I hope that I was able to narrow it down for you a little bit, especially if you have similar skin to me to give you a few of those standout products. So just to, you know, wrap it up, the things that I would totally recommend you pick up are the Beekman Milk Drops. Totally love that. Anything from Hero, the Clear Collective line is awesome, especially if you're looking for a light exfoliation and their pimple patches. And then either the Rose Water Toner or the Matcha stick from Coco Kind if you want to support their company and you want to find a way to use their products even though you have very sensitive skin. Last thing I'm going to say is I am wearing the Super Dew highlighter from Tower 28 right now. I've never looked so beaming in my life. I'm, I'm like, I can't stop looking at myself in the viewfinder. It's basically like a clear balm highlighter, which I guess is similar to the M Cosmetics one that I talked about in that collaboration video I had with Kevin, but it's a, I mean, she looks sweaty in the best way. Let me know down below if you have any questions on these products or these brands, or if you have recommendations for us from these brands or newer brands that you have been trying out. I'm always looking for more suggestions for sensitive skin, and I will see you guys in the next video really soon. Bye.